How about you get on your feet and give God praise if you're happy to be in the house of God? If God's been good to you, give God praise all around the sanctuary. Well, amen, amen, amen. Well, it's good to have you all here at Mount Zion on a Sunday morning. It's good to see some smiling faces on this uh, beautiful sunny day that, the God, that uh, our God has blessed us with. Welcome to all of our parking lot praisers that are with us today. Let's welcome all our parking lot praisers that are with us today. We're always mindful here at Mount Zion that while we're praising God right in here, we got people in the parking lot in their cars just giving God praise as well. It's a beautiful thing. And we're also mindful of everyone that's joining us here online. Well, I'm grateful to God. I believe that God has a word for you today. I believe that God has a life-changing word for you today. And I believe he's going to do some great things. You know, I'm mindful that, you know, many of us, when we come together, uh, we have real issues. Uh, we have real challenges that we're dealing with in life and in this world. Um, some of you have some real problems, real difficulties that are, you're facing right now. But I'm grateful to God yeah. that we have a really big God. Yeah. And we have a really strong God. Do I have a witness that we have a really big, yeah. a really strong God? And uh, I just want to let you know that God is shining down on you today. That God sees you. He sees what you're dealing with. He sees what's on your mind. He sees what's on your heart. And he's shining down on you today. And what you need to do is put yourself in position to receive what God has for you. Because I believe this is a special moment. This is a, a time right now that can change your entire life. All you need is one word from God. Just one word from God. And it can change your entire mind, your heart, and your perspective. And launch you into a different place. I believe that God has a word for you today. I want to inspire you, encourage you to put yourself in position to receive all that God has in store for you. We have a praise team here today that's going to lead us. Let's give God praise for our praise team. Now, these are praise leaders. So if they're leading, we need some people to follow. Do I got any praisers that's going to praise with our praise team? Oh, man, I believe God's going to do something good today. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to come before your presence, Lord. We come with joy, Lord, grateful for this opportunity, grateful for this day, grateful for our health and our strength, Father, Lord, and our abilities, Father, Lord. For we know, Lord, that you have great things in store for the future because you are a great God, Father, Lord. And we're ready to receive a word from you, a life-changing word from you, a miracle-working word from you today, Lord. And we're going to start this service off praising and lifting your name up high, Lord, because you are worthy of all of the praise. Come into this place, Lord, in a mighty way that we can feel your presence like never before. We pray these things in your precious name. Let all the faithful people of God shout. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. That it's my time, it's my time, cause I can feel it, it's a breakthrough in the road, I'm anticipating, God's getting ready to move, said I believe, I believe, it's my season. I believe that it's my time, that it's my 
Come on, stand on your feet and give God a great big hand praise because this is the best day of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you just turn to five people and wave at them and say, this is the best day of my life? It is the best day of your life because so far it's the only day that you got in your life is right today. And this is the best day. You know, you know so often we come to church and um, we don't praise God and then we go home and we discover that that Sunday was probably the better day to praise God because things started falling apart. And this is the best day of our life right now because that's all we have is right now. Can you give the choir a great big hand praise? Amen. Thank you, choir. Just turn to your neighbor again and just wave at them again and just tell them how glad you are to see them today. Hey, wave at the person that's way in the back of you. Way in the back. And then person in the back, wave at the person way in the front of you. Amen. Praise God. You may go to your seat. We're so grateful to God to see you today and we're grateful to God for your presence we're grateful to God for what God is doing here at the Mount Zion Ministry. And today is graduate day. Say graduate day. Amen. Now, if you are a graduate and you didn't sign up or whatever, and you, or you came in a little bit late, we want you to come up front here and sit with the graduates. If you're here today, you graduated from high school, college, uh, seminary. Some people graduated from seminary. We want you to join us today. And then afterwards, all the little children, if, you are, if, you, if you're in the kindergarten to 12th grade, uh, and you move from one school to another school, so you came out of elementary into uh, middle school. How many, how many kids are in here that came, went from elementary to middle school? You're in middle school this year. Stand up. Let's give them a great big hand. Middle school, little kids, stand up. Middle school, there you go. Now y'all remain standing there for just a moment. All of you have gone from middle school to high school uh, coming in uh, fall. You're going from middle school to high school. Stand up. Amen. Let's give them a great big hand. That's it. How many of you are going into kindergarten? Is anybody here going into kindergarten? Little kids going into kindergarten. All right. I, I wouldn't see you if you did stand up. Let's give them a great big hand. That's one or two of you. There you go. Uh, is, is anybody else going to college? Stand up if you're an audience out there. All, all of our graduates to, uh, graduated from high school, stand up. All graduates from high school. Amen. They're over here right now today. Praise God. Amen. If you graduated from high school, you can join us. All those graduating from college, stand up. All of those graduating from college, let's give them a great big hand. Amen. Is there anybody else graduating from college? Stand up. Amen. Anybody else going to, to, the, to, the, to the doctorate program? Anybody going to the doctorate program? Right over here is... All right. All right. That's Donisha. That's the singing, singing lady. Amen. And so you're going to get a certificate today, Donisha, because you are graduating, going into your doctorate program. She's going to be running schools pretty soon. Uh, we got such great vision, uh, Donisha. You're going to run our school. I I'm already running schools, Pastor. You ain't running our school. Not yet. Until you run our <laughs> school, you ain't running no school. Amen, my son. Amen. So we want all of those kids who uh, said that they're graduating, all of those kids that stood up, I want you to just come and stand uh, over here to my right. All of those kids that you, you're going into elementary, you're going into middle school, you're going into high school, all of those little kids that stood up, those kids that stood up in the audience. Can you send your kid up here? And, and if you're afraid for them to st stand next to somebody, just uh, bring them with you. All the kids that stood up in the audience, I want you to come up. We got a certificate for you. And while you're coming, yes, we got a certificate for you also. We're going to celebrate you moving from one school, school, uh, school to another. Amen. You just come right over here. Amen. There's plenty of room right up front here. Let's give our little kids. Bring your kids with you, parents. Bring the little ones with you. You can walk with them right now. Amen. Because we want to give them certificates and let them know how great they're doing. We have a video. We're going to look at this video, see what, uh, how we're going to. If you, in the moment that you hear your name, graduate, we want you to go over there. Who's going to be distributing the uh, gifts here? Amen. All right. I guess nobody's going to do that. Okay. 
Boy, we still are in an endemic, I guess. When you hear your name, you can go over there and get one of those bags. Graduates, amen, you get one of those bags that's right on that table. Then I want you to come up here on stage. If you don't hear your name, just come on up anyway. Amen. Let's give them all a great big hand, our video of our graduates. The most selfish thing you can do in this world is help someone else. Why is it selfish? Because the gratification, the goodness that comes to you, the good feeling, the good feeling that I get from helping others, nothing's better than that. Not jewelry, not big house I have, not the cars, but the, the, it's the joy. That's where the joy is in helping others. That's where the success is. Finally, I pray that you put your slippers way under the bed tonight so that when you wake up in the morning you have to get on your knees to reach them and while, you, when, while you're down there say thank you for grace thank you for mercy thank you for understanding yes. thank you for wisdom thank you for parents thank you for love thank you for kindness thank you for humility Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you yes. in advance for what's already yours. Oh, Work yes. hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Yes. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. Jeremiah Petit, St. Mary Byzantine Catholic School. Give him a great big hand. Samaya Washington, Aurora High School. Dwayne Randolph, Twinsburg High School. DeAsia Randolph, Twinsburg hey, High School. Hey. Javon <laughs> Evans, Cleveland Heights High School. Ahmad Sharif, Alonzo High School in Tampa, Florida. Tamia Kelly, Shaker Heights High School. Zariah Petit, Bedford High School. Keyshawn Jackson, Great Rivers Connection Academy. Damir Rashad Kimbrough, Bedford High School. Troy Gentry, Cleveland Heights High School. Jacob Jones, Nerdonia High School. Marcellus Washington Jr., Nerdonia High School. Jonay Khan, Remington College. Deja Newton, Baldwin Wallace University. Nina Starks, University of Akron. Hey man, let's get by graduating. Now our children are going to go get their certificate there. Amen. Our children, get them, give our children a bag also. They graduated too. Come on, children. You're going to come up here on stage. All of our children who stood up, we got something special for you. If you're a graduate, we got something special for you. They're graduating, going from one school to another school. That's a blessing by itself. Amen. Come right on up. Come right on up. They're getting their certificate as well. Let's give our 2020 2020. Oh, Darnisha, you ain't gonna get your gift here. Run and make make you run over here, Darnisha. Yeah. Run, run, run. <laughs> I can't tell her to run. She just ran out, out with the gas and everything. Let's give all of our high school and our college graduates a great big hand. Our elementary, our middle school, our kindy school, and our high school moving from one grade to another. Come on, we can do better than that. These are our children. These are our children. Give our children a great big hand. If these are your children, give them a great big hey. Hey, man, we're proud of all of y'all. Y'all just heard the message from Denzel Washington. So when you, when somebody said who was your commencement speaker, I want you to go back and I want you to tell them who, who, who should they tell spoke to them today? Denzel Washington. Say. You say, hey, yeah, yeah, Denzel was in the house at Mount Zion Church, and he told us exactly how we're supposed to live and do the rest of our days uh, in all of success story, okay? Let's give them another great big hand. Y'all can go back to your seat. Hey, Amen. We are proud of each of you. Don't forget your pastor has a doctorate degree. Amen. So he's a doctor, and 
your, your pastor senior, Dan has a journalism and a bachelor degree. And pastor Larry got a lawyer degree, so you got to keep on keeping on. Come on, Pastor Dan. Amen. As we stand to the attention. Oh, we're going to hear our announcements at this time. Praise God. Our announcement as you prepare yourself for the giving to God. Amen. When you saw a seed, you all of our student ministries are dismissed at this time. Kids K through six can exit to the right of the stage, and all middle and high school students can exit to the left of the stage. New Bible study is back every first Tuesday of the month. We will explore relevant biblical topics that will change your life. Join us for one hour as we grow through the word. We are currently creating new connect groups and ministries. Maybe you love collecting items and giving them to those in need. Or maybe you like to gather at coffee shops. Or you like activities like skating, bowling, exercising, or running. If you have a special interest and would like to connect with others, let the team know at the connect desk in the foyer. Father's Day is on the way, Sunday, June 19th. Bring your father to church and celebrate fathers with us. We are having donuts with dad at both services in the foyer. Join our summer activities on Sundays in June after our 11 a.m. service. Join Miss Jackie as she teaches line dancing. Rescheduled for August 4th, our college students are meeting up at the Kirk Franklin and Maverick City Concert at Blossom Music Center. There's also Vacation Bible School every Sunday in July for our children and youth with special games and guests like entertainer Rick Smith Jr. from The Tonight Show and Jungle Bob with his interesting zoo animals. Then there's Serve Day, where we will pack outreach items to serve people at the City Mission and our Rahab Ministries. Lastly, Friends and Family Sunday on August 7th, where we will have a cookout, vendors, and inflatables for our kids. Invite new people to church to learn more about us and our ministries. Join Dr. Macon with his new ministry, Dads on Duty. When school starts up, they will be mentoring and protecting our kids in local schools. Sign up at the Connect Desk. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Well, amen. Come on, give God praise for all the great things that he's doing here at Mount Zion. You know, it feels good to be summertime here at Mount Zion. We like to do things to get outside and enjoy the sunshine and bring our family together and, and just have a good time as a congregation. So I encourage you all to get involved with all the great things from VBS to Serve Day that we're doing here at Mount Zion. Of course, next week is what? Father's Day. Father's Day. So make sure you invite your father to, to be a part of service with us. My father was coming up here. I didn't know what for. He was <laughs> what, what was that? He wants to speak to these young people. Sam Balders. Yeah, Sam, from the high school. Where's Sam at? Sam, let's give Sam a great big hand. Come on up here and inspire these young people. I tell you what, we could say a lot for this group and for this, the high schoolers that are here today. You think about the journey, if you could bring me down just a little bit. You think about the journey that they had to go through to get to this graduation. And uh, you had to go through something to get to where you are right now. And you did that together. Uh, I mean, how many of you could say that school shut down and then you had to come back and finish? And this group was able to do that to achieve that. And that's a life lesson you could take with you for the rest of your life for the battles that you have in life. But Sam, hey, man, let's give Sam a great big hand praise. This is Sam Balter from the Bedford School System, and he has helped us with the program that we have had. We did it, uh, and we've been doing it inside of the schools. It's titled uh, Dad's on Duty. And so we started this ministry to make sure that our kids stay safe, and so we have a ministry of presence. And, oh, you should have been there when we were out there. We went to the middle school, and then we went to the high school, and when we went to the high school. Everybody wanted to know who were all those men. Uh, our backs was turned towards the uh, administration building and they thought we were a part of the Nation of Islam or some protest group until they saw one brother who had a Jesus t-shirt on and they said, oh, we know we are right long they were Jesus. And the kids were just waving at us, parents were shouting at us saying, we're glad that you're here. 
uh, single mothers would say, hey, I got a daughter or I got a son and I need somebody to just be in presence. We discovered that in our schools it's very hard to get black men, especially to, uh, to have enough black men to uh, become teachers inside of schools. Uh, in one of our schools, there's only one black male other than uh, the principal. In another school, in the same school, only three black females teachers. Uh, in the high school, hmm, we're trying to still find the one black man. And so our presence is very much needed. Plus, with what is going on around the country, we want to let people know, you probably don't want to come to this school and do anything because we are dads on duty. Of course, we don't, uh, we don't break up fights. Turn to your neighbor and say, Mate, neighbor, the old dudes don't break up no fights. <laughs> Amen. We don't break up fights. In fact, when we stand, uh, we had our shirts on last week. When we stand before the uh, uh, kids, if they get into a fight, we ask our men to put your hands inside your pocket because we don't want nobody to be coming at you either. But anyway, uh, it was, in fact, Sam Valters who helped us to create this marvelous, marvelous program entitled Dad's on duty, and he's going to tell you more about that as well. Amen. Give him a great big hand. Brother Sam. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I want to start off by saying uh, thank you to Pastor Macon and Pastor Larry and Miles Zion. Um, each time that we've had some type of traumatic event, we've never had to call on Miles Zion. Miles Zion has always called us and said, how can we help? How can we serve? And so from the bottom of my heart, our hearts, I want to thank you, Pastor, uh, on behalf of our superintendent who is here, Dr. Cassandra Johnson. Would you please stand? Our board president, Ms. Eva Boyenson, would you please stand? Our board vice president, Ms. Danielle Birch. And if it's all right, Pastor, I see one of my other principal, my principals, Ms. Aaron Black, who's the principal of Glendale and her son. Would you all stand? Would you stand, Ms. Black? I believe it was Joshua and Caleb that led the children of Israel, and they were in good hands. I just want you to know that we have Dr. Cassandra Johnson and Ms. Eva Boynton, our board president and superintendent. We are in great, great hands as our leaders. But I um, want to thank everyone. We, we had our, we've lost a principal. We've had tragedy amongst our students who got killed. And even in the pandemic, you've always helped us. And uh, this last time when those students got murdered in school, Pastor Macon called uh, me and uh, other central office administrators and say, here's what we want to do. And so they went to Heskett Middle School, and as Pastor said, we went to the high school. Uh, again, I am not the principal of the high school, Miss Kalisha Lewis, who is a graduate of Bedford High School. She is the principal. I've been promoting, absolutely, I, don't, I didn't see her, but those of us know Miss Lewis, and she's doing an awesome job. She's doing an awesome job. But Pastor, again, from the bottom of our hearts, we just thank you. The dads on duty, any of the dads who are here that served on that, would you please stand and be recognized? All our dads on duty. Thank you so much for your service. Pastor Macon said, uh, Sam, we want to start this uh, Dads on Duty. I said, sure, we can start it in the fall. He said, well, don't you have summer school? And I said, yes, sir, we do. And so from the bottom of our hearts, again, thank you so much for Dads on Duty. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Um, Pastor asked me to say something to the, to the graduates. To the graduates. Um, three Ps of life. Number one, passion. Find out what you're passionate about. What excites you? What motivates you? What drives you? What's your passion? Number two, develop your purpose. Two most important days of your life is number one, the day that you were born. The second, the day that you figure out why. Find your why in life. Have your passion, understand your why, and do know that the provision will always be there. People always misquote the Bible and say that money is the root of all evil. It says money, money is the root. But you know what it says is for the love of money is the root of all evil. So young people, I want to encourage you to understand your passion. Develop your why. What's your purpose in life? Don't worry about the money. The provision will always be there. It starts here in your thinking. If you think you're a being, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win but think you can't, it's almost a sense you won't. You have to think high to rise. You have to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life battles doesn't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. God bless you. Amen. Let's give them a great big hand. And to our administrators, amen. And 
our principals. We're just glad to have you and our teacher. Amen. Pastor Dan. Amen. Let's all stand as we prepare for our giving today. How many are grateful for giving time? Give God praise. For God loves a cheerful giver. We're going to read our scripture of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. But before we read that, I just want to inspire you and just inspire to encourage you to grow in your giving. You know, generosity is the cornerstone of healthy people. We, think, we find out in life that the healthiest people are those that give. Um, I get the opportunity uh, on my job. I work for a financial organization. I get to work with a lot of people in their finances. And one thing that I find out is that the happiest people and the most joyful people, people who are peace, aren't necessarily the people that have the most money, but they're the people that give, that are generous with what they've been given. They're the people that give to their church. They give to organizations. They give to people. They give to their children. Actually, children's not a popular one, but, but grandchildren is a popular one. But they're givers. And, you know, we should grow in our giving. And as, you know, as we give today, one, two things I said this morning is that, you know, I'm mindful that I don't give to Mount Zion. I give through Mount Zion. I'm giving to God. I'm giving to his kingdom. I'm following him. And I'm also not giving to get. A lot of people give, and God's going to bless me because I gave. But, you know, I don't give to get. I give because I have a relationship with the Most High God. I have a relationship with the one that first gave to me. And he's given me all that I need right now. And I give to him, and I'm giving to something much greater than any other thing here on earth. So I want to encourage you to constantly grow at your giving, in your giving journey, and know that you're giving to something great. Let us uh, read our scripture collectively this morning of Malachi 3, 6 through 12, and we'll read it responsibly. And it says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Then he asked, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say... Wherein have he robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And twelve together, and all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let me pray over you this morning before we give. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just grateful the Lord and thankful for the faithful people of God today that are giving to you, Father Lord, that are giving to your kingdom, Father Lord. I pray a special blessing over their life, Lord, over their family, Lord, over their future, Father Lord. I pray a special blessing over the seed, Lord. I pray over the seed that they're delivering today, Lord. I pray that it grows to be something great, Father Lord. We thank you for this house, Lord, that we're giving through, Lord, to get to you, Father Lord. The mission that you have delivered to us as a people, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that we continue to grow, continue to make a difference, and continue to spread your word, Father Lord. Bless this time, bless this offering, bless this time, bless the tithe, and bless the giver. We pray these things in your precious name. Let us all say amen, amen. Amen. You may bring your tithes and your offering at this time as our praise team leads us.
us all stand together. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own. And of thine own. Have we given thee. Have we given thee. Amen. Let's give God praise as pastor comes today. Amen. As you remain standing for just a moment, lifting up a word of prayer, even for me, the messenger of God, and the message, if you'll just whisper a word of, of empowerment, someone needs to pray. The Bible says, pray without ceasing, as we talked on last week. Someone needs to pray for God to speak to them. You've been asking God all week say a word to you and he wants to say a word to you but you have to ask him the Bible says ask and it shall be given and we can be empowered if you will just ask the Bible says Jesus says ask of me anything and if it's ask in my name I will do it Eternal God, our Father, we are believing now that you will speak in your own marvelous and strange way. We thank you for these students that have come here today to celebrate the great accomplishment that they have made. And we thank you, God, for our superintendent of schools at Bedford, for the principals who have shown up and the teachers who are in the room. We thank you for the young ones who will one day stand here and receive their celebration of high school graduation, of college graduation, of universities, graduations. We thank you, God, for allowing us to participate in your kingdom in such a marvelous kind of a way. Even now, may we go out as a marching army, not just to be hearers of what we have heard today from Sam Walters and from Denzel Washington and others, but help us to become doers. I pray that there will be a special consecration and anointing upon these students' lives. But most of all, God, we thank you for the parents who have sacrificed, who have been there for their children, who have decided that their children would not walk through the academic system alone, but rather they will be there, that they will go to those PTA meetings and those other meetings, that they will be there when they're in sports, be there when they play music, instruments, be there when they are doing academic challenges. We thank you for grandparents who have also had to stand in the stead sometimes of even mothers and fathers. We ask that you will bless their lives and as Pastor Daniel so instructed us, as you have been a great giver in giving yourself to us, we want to be a great giver in giving ourselves to each other. In the name of Jesus we pray and all the people of God said, amen. Give God a great big hand praise as you go to your seat. How marvelous it is to see these students graduating from high school, college. It takes me back to yesterday. It was only yesterday that I sat where they sat about two or three years ago. I'm rather young. I look old, but I'm young. And I shall never forget the day that I had graduated and my own uh, church had celebrated my great accomplishment of graduating in high school. Then I went on to college and got myself a bachelor's degree. And then I went on and said a bachelor's degree was not enough, though everybody does not have to go to college. Some people are called to go to other kinds of schools, which is great. But I went on and got another master's degree. And then I said one master's not enough. I went on and got another master's degree. And I said two masters is still not enough. And I went on and got a doctorate degree. And so I became a doctor in the ministry and theology and all of that. And then I said, well, maybe somebody will now give me a doctorate degree. And someone out of Florida came to this church and gave me an honorary doctor. So I, I refused to stop. And I just kept on going and going and going. And my education did not stop after I received the doctorate. I had to continue training myself. And I became a professor at the Cleveland State University where I was teaching college students 
teaching the current moral issue, how to become moral and what are moral decisions that you have to make and how do you make those moral decisions. And I didn't stop there. I went on and I started teaching black church, black religion in America, sharing with how our religion did not start here on the shores of America, but rather they started on the shores of Africa in those African religious tradition, traditional religions. And then I didn't stop there. I decided that maybe I ought to teach about Martin Luther King Jr. And so I talked about the integration, the integrationist, the great civil rights leader and the whole movement of the civil rights movement. And uh, I didn't want to just start, I just didn't want to have the argument of the civil rights movement and how we integrate into this great society, this United States of America, but I also wanted to find out who are the opposition to people like Martin Luther King Jr. So I taught the religious ethics, yes, yes, the, relig the religious ethics of Malcolm X, the Islamic minister of the Muslim ministry, especially during the 1960s. But I kept on constantly, constantly putting things in my mind because I knew that if I could get the right stuff in my mind, it would express itself in my life. And then I discovered that I would not be ignorant and people couldn't tell me anything. I say to them, no, that's not right because I have been studying for all of my life. So this, this thing called moving in life is a lifelong journey, say a lifelong journey. But what I discovered is that every moment in my life, I had to do what Rick Ross calls boss up. <laughs> Say boss up. You know, one of the best books you ought to get and read is by this hip hopper and this marvelous entrepreneur and businessman by the name of Rick Ross. Those of us who are in the hip hop community like myself outside of church. We call him Rosé. <laughs> Rosé, or Rick Ross, wrote a book entitled The Perfect Day to Boss Up. The Perfect Day to Boss Up. A and this book is phenomenal. It is a great book in all of your readings. Get Rick Ross' book, The Perfect Day to Boss Up. In his book, Rick Ross talks about the day he learned about the coronavirus. He was getting ready to catch a flight to travel to Mexico when the pandemic began. And he, talked, uh, he talks about it early in the early portion of his book, The Perfect Day to Boss Up. And so what he does is instead of him going to Mexico, he decided to stay here in America, and uh, he was told by the flight attendants that uh, if you go to Mexico, the chances are with this coronavirus, you will not be able to re-enter into America. And Ross talks in his book about how while he was in the Miami airport, he decided to go back home in what he called the promised land. The promised land was the former home of the heavyweight champion, Evander Holyfield. Rick Ross bought that mansion that was located on more than 238 acres of land and that it became his home after it went into foreclosure. And so he bought the home and the acreages of land. He, he tells a story in his book about how he went back home to his mansion, which was the place he would hold up during the pandemic. And while there, he said he had to cut for the first time and mow his own lawn. He goes to the barn to get the mower. And while he was there, he noticed that there were mirrors all on the wall. These were the mirrors that Holyfield had placed up while he was using them as a place to do his sparring, a place to look at himself while he's boxing and spar with other people. And he was getting ready. Holyfield used the place to get ready for his major fights. It's in the book. 
And, and so Ross decided what he was going to do with that barn. He was going to turn it into his own recording studio. He, he said about this pandemic, and I quote, he said this in the book, in the first portion of the book. He said, no matter what challenge this pandemic presented, I was going to go with the flow and adjust accordingly. But I was going to find, even in the midst of the pandemic, the coronavirus, even in the midst of isolation, even in the midst of not being able to go places like he wanted to go, he said, in his heart and his mind, I'm going to win regardless. He then went to every place on his property, he said. He said he was trying to figure out what he could turn each area of the property into that would make him money, say money. He said again in the book, at a time when the whole world was on standby, while nothing was happening, said to himself, I'm clear on what I need to do to make things happen when nothing, I wish I could preach this, is happening. And, and here's the part that really got me in his book, and I'll paraphrase it. He said, the last time I was in this position, the last time I was stuck at home when I was in the position of being Locked in my house, he said, was 2015 when he was on house arrest. He said the entire world was outside making moves. I couldn't go beyond my front gate and I couldn't do anything. And he continues in the book by saying, but this time the world is on lockdown. But I'm not going to miss an opportunity to do something for myself. In spite of the current condition that would hold me down, he said, I'm not going to allow, watch this, lockdown to lock me up. I wish I had a witness in the house. And, and I just need to tell you, parenthetically, that you're going to find yourself in life, not only as students, but as students of life, you're going to find yourself every now and then in lockdown. It might be a health condition, a health issue. It might be the coronavirus. It, it might be high blood. It might be hypertension. It might be high cholesterol. It might be uh, diabetes. Uh, it might be eye problems. Whatever it is, when you are locked down, never forget that you are never locked out. I wish I had a witness who would shout right there because you've been through something. You found yourself in lockdown. You found yourself, like the old uh, sing, songwriter used to say, I was way down yonder by myself, but I couldn't hear nobody pray. But guess what? When I could not hear nobody pray, I prayed on anyhow. When I couldn't hear nobody sing, I sung my song in a strange land. When I couldn't find a friend, I shouted, what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. When you are locked down, we've got to teach our kids, don't get afraid, don't get frightened, don't panic. When you're in lockdown, just never forget, there's always a way up and there's always a way out. If you hold on and trust in the Lord, in due season, the Lord, I wish I had a shouter here today, the Lord will show up and show out. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way out of no way? When you go to the doctor, won't he be a doctor in a sick room? When you ain't got a dime to claim, won't he be money in the midst of poverty? When you don't have food on your table, won't he make a way out of no way? Have I got a witness? If the marriage is going wrong, won't he be a father for the fatherless and a mother for the motherless? Won't he do it? I declare he will do it. You may be, I'm preaching already, you may be locked down, but you ain't never locked out. I wish I had a, had a winner in the house today. Boss! That's 
what I was trying to tell you about all the time in my journey academically, how I kept on going because I decided I was going to win, that nothing was going to lock me out, even though I was locked down. I wish I could tell you the story. Oh, I was cool in high school. Oh, well, Reverend Megan was cool, Jack. I mean, I dressed cool. I smoked cool. But they wasn't cool that I smoked. Uh-huh, y'all didn't know that about me. Y'all thought I was always holy. Well, I got a revelation to tell you. You ain't always been holy either. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you, you probably still ain't holy. Shoot, man. I popped a pill here and there. And they wasn't no aspirins either. I was already skinny, and I didn't need no diet pills. There's a few in the house know what kind of pills those were. And as a result of all that mess, I had a C minus average. And I went to college, and they said to me, said, Reverend, they said, Larry Macon, we're going to let you into Cleveland State University. But guess what? With your average, we're sure that we're going to put you out before the first quarter. State school. I went in there and I got myself, uh, uh, I tried to do my best. I got myself my first C minus. It was the best grade I got out of all the courses. And then I had a D and then I had an F. You know what that means? We call it probation. And they told me if you don't do better by the next semester, you're going to be put out. And I had to boss up. I had to boss up. I had to throw them cools, y'all know what I'm talking about, to the side. And let them pills go. And let the girls. Oh, that was hard. That was hard. I could, I could let the cools go and uh, I could let the pills go, but uh, letting the girls go. <laughs> That was the most challenging thing as it was. And when the girls went, the parties went. And I had to boss up. And what, what Rick Ross was saying to us even today, this is a perfect day. I'll tell you why in a minute. To boss up. This is the perfect day to boss up if you're out there and you haven't bossed up and you're still out there playing games with God in life. This is the perfect day. This Sunday right now is the perfect day to make a decision that you're going to boss up. Not only boss up for yourself, but to boss up for the Lord and to boss up for your family and to boss up for your career and to boss up for your destination. This is, this is the best time of the, the perfect day to boss up, which means to take complete control of your life, to take complete control of your destiny. Those of you who are graduating, going on to college, it's time for you to boss up. Ain't nobody gonna let you lay up in the house for nothing and for free like they did for the first part of your life. It's time to boss up. I've seen some folk who stayed in their parents' home until they was 40 and 50. They never bossed up and wanted to end up bossing up when their parents went on to glory, but I stop by to tell you, boss up now. It's a perfect day to make it in your mind, to set your path right now. Decide which way you're going, how you're going to get there, what you're gonna do, what must be sacrificed, what must be added, what must be taken away from you. Can somebody shout boss up? Boss. I told Daniel that. When he graduated, I told Larry that. I said, you got some choices now. You can go to school. I'll support you. Come on. You can go to Army. Or you can go get a job. I said, but one thing you can't do
I said, you're 18 years old. Grown men don't lay up on grown men. Because grown men don't let grown men lay up on grown men. I said, so you got a choice. And Daniel had already made a decision. He said, you ain't going to never pay for my college anyway. I said, why not? He said, because I'm going to be a football player, and I've already done academically what I needed to do, make that right. And, uh, you know, you ain't got to pay for mine. It's show enough. He got a four-year scholarship at Bowling Green University. I say, that's bossing up. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's bossing up. Say, neighbor, when you can pay your own rent or your own way. That's bossing up. In New Orleans, they had the largest black class, one of the largest black graduate classes in America. They had 100% graduation of high school kids. They bossed up in New Orleans and collectively, they collected $9.4 million in scholarship. I say that's bossing up. All right, let me close. I didn't mean to preach. Sam did that this morning. Denzel Washington. Today, he was saying, Ross was saying, today is the perfect day. You don't have to succumb to your bad conditions. You don't allow your conditions to condition you. You always condition your conditions. And boss up. He was saying, it's the perfect day to decide what you're dealing with. What you're dealing with is never the same as who you are. I grew up in the ghetto. I grew up poor. My mom had nine kids in 10 years and added another five. That's 14 kids that she was taking care of and they were all one year after the other. I grew up in discrimination. I grew up where I was called the N-word so many times that that, that it really didn't bother me. I, I grew up where I was not allowed to sit where other people were allowed to sit. I, I grew up where whites thought that they were better than me. I grew up in that. I grew up in all of that. But at the end of the day, the conditions did not condition me. Rather, they actually made me better. Come on, stand on your feet. I'm ready to go. It's the perfect day for you to decide that you don't have to just sit here and do nothing. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Here's what Paul says, and I finish. He says in Philippians 3.13, this is my text, forgetting those things which are behind. He says, press towards the high mark of those things that are in front of you. Brethren, I can't, can't not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting, say forgetting. Forgetting means it's over. What you have accomplished is accomplished. You ain't high school student no more. I used to go to college. These high school students would act like they were still in high school. And I would tell them, hey, you, please be quiet. They wouldn't be quiet. So I said one more time, hey, you, be, please be quiet. You're talking. I'm trying to lecture. And they wouldn't stop. And then the third time I would say, hey, you, this ain't the 13th. This ain't the 13th grade. This is a university and college. Boss up. Watch this. He said, forgetting those things that are behind which means they are over, say over. And when he says they are over, forgetting those things which are behind, he is saying, bury them in the past. Let them go, let the things in the past go. I think one of the saddest thing, and I guess I better quit. I think one of the saddest thing for me is to see my colleagues in high school never go to college, never try to get a job, never do anything, but they are 40, 50, now 60, 70 years old, still bragging about their old high school days. They were rebels back then, and they ain't did nothing else since they graduated, but remain rebels. Oh, geez, gray hair, 
teeth all out. Can't hardly walk. But they'll tell you I'll be at the reunion. 60 years later, rebels, you were bears. Now become wolves. Now become foxes. Now become whatever. But forget those things in the past. Now you got to start your new journey. Now you got to act different. Now you got to think different. Now you got to walk different. Now you've got to talk different. Now you got to smile different. Now you got to sit in the front of the class. Now you got to talk to the professor. Now you got to take serious your studies. Now you got to push forward. Forgetting those things that are behind. You got to press. You got to push. You got to give it your all. You got to keep on going. When you get tired, you got to go on anyhow. Now, you got to really pray. Now, you got to really read your scripture. Now, you got to really find yourself some good friends. Now, you got to depend upon the church. Now is the time to stay in church. Now is the time not to just have fun but to bear down on it press when it gets hard when it gets dark when you can't see when you get disappointed when you don't know which way to go when you don't have no friends just keep on pressing your way and one day you might be up here like me talking about i got five degrees and still pressing my way. Had you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God even now? If you're here today, you need to boss up. If you're unsaved, you need to boss up. If you're not doing the will of God, you need to boss up. There are some things that you're doing not so good in your own family, in your own life. It's time to boss up and Jesus gives us a way to boss up. He says, first of all, if you ask forgiveness of your sin, I am faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness so you can boss up right now. It ain't no shame in your game to tell God I made some mistake. I'm doing some things that are not pleasing in thy sight that you cannot bless. It's not any shame in that game. What is shame in the game is when you won't tell God what he already knows about you and what you already have done. And once you confess your sins to him, he will forgive you of your sin. Just tell him that you want to accept him in your heart, your life as his savior. And see what happens in your life. When you start to bossing up, you got a boss that will walk with you. You got a boss that will take you through the journey and help you to press all the way through. You're here today. Would you all repeat after me? Say, dear God, I believe your son Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. He bossed up. You bossed up, God. On Calvary. And shed your blood for me. In spite of. The enemies. And so I want to accept you in my life right now. I want you to go everywhere I go. And never leave me. And when my enemies say. And when my enemies. Encamp around me. I believe. You're going to prepare a table before me. Thank you for bossing up for me first that I might boss up against this evil and contrary world. Thank you, Lord. I love you so much. And I'll be talking to you soon in Jesus' name. Continue talking to God very quickly in your own way. We want you to pray for Sister Janice Smith who lost her her daughter, funeral, funeral is being prepared, and also uh, parents that buried their son here at the church on Friday. 27-year-old man who had uh, some health issues. So that family is in bereavement. Got another family who lost uh, someone, I can't recall their name, but God knows, and you can ask at the front desk. And I also want you to pray very quickly for our prayer-a-thon, if you will, our prayer-a-thon. We're going to have a uh, prayer where we're going to be walking around the church at 12 noon on this Tuesday. We have stickers in the educational wing where you can write your prayer request right there on the wall and just leave it hanging up there. Or if you want to put it in the bucket, you can. And we're going to be walking around the church at 12. We invite all of you who are not doing very much to come and join us. And those of you who are working and have other things to do, we ask that you bow your head 
at 12 o'clock noon and pray for us and we'll send you some of the things that we're praying for eternal god our father we thank you for allowing us to worship you in spirit and truth we thank you for this this day that we celebrate these young people god we didn't want to just discourage them but we wanted to encourage them you gave us the word to do it through your philippians 3:13 passage thank you god for even brothers like rick ross who tells us though life may be struggles though there may be challenges so you may be locked down you're never locked out as long as we're with the man who always holds the keys of life and death in his hand. Thank you, God, for unloosening us on the inside. Now, God, be with us, and especially for this Bedford High School, we pray that you will be with this superintendent, these principals, all of these teachers, and the men and dads on duty. Be with the Twinsburg High School, the Macedonia High School, Warrensville Heights High School, Maple Heights High School, those schools that are around us first in our first ring and then God reach out to the other schools and again God protect our children God when crazy people come in and want to kill kids we know that that is demonically pushed and authorized and we pray against anyone who wants to take down children or human life and even in our struggle to understand the gun laws and the abortion issue we pray oh God that you will remind us that you will light up our pathway and we're asking for some light even in these areas even on a national basis and those who are in ukraine who are suffering right now even those who are in russia who are suffering with doing things they know they ought not to be doing i pray god that you will move on the altar of their hearts and all of a sudden give them a change of mind and direction it's so many things that are going on in our world god but we know you sit high look slow and guide all of our feet wherever we go when we don't understand god we realize we got a god who cares cares for us in Jesus' name we pray. All the people of God shouted amen. Give God a great big hand praise. Give God a great big, give God the best praise you can. Come on, let's boss up for about two seconds. Come on, let's boss up. Look at your neighbor and tell him, God bless your neighbor. Consider yourself dismissed. No, never, no, never.